Over the past couple of days I was playing Outriders demo and I wanted to make a sort of a review of the demo and my overall impressions and what to expect from the game itself. Now before we begin, if you enjoy these videos, click that like and subscribe button for more because you do help out a channel a lot and let's get into it. So Outriders is a new upcoming game from People Can Fly and Square Enix who is publishing the title. This is an action RPG third person shooter, but also being a looter shooter in a sense. And the best way to describe the game is if you put Gears of War, Warframe and Destiny into one title. The game takes place on a planet of Enoch. You take control of an outrider who comes there but due to some shenanigans on the planet itself he gets frozen and woken up hundred years later just to see the planet of Enoch that they once thought would be a reset for human race felt the same problems like Earth did. You can also make your own character, the usual character creation is there and after that you choose one out of four classes and those are Devastator, Pyromancer, Technomancer and Trickster. And all of these classes have different uses and you can use up to three abilities when you fight. But overall so far I believe you have eight abilities in total that you can switch up. There is also the usual skill tree so you can make the character that fits your playstyle the best. So does it work? Well, I had my overall expectations at a normal level for this and honestly, I was not disappointed with the demo itself. Most importantly, the game is fun to play and one of the main comments I saw was about graphics and animations. I mean, overall graphic design is nice. Uh, Graphics themselves in some cases are maybe outdated for today's standards with a double A games vibe. But honestly for me lately it became more important if the game is fun and enjoyable rather than having the best graphics or best this and best that. So it's important that everything in this game is you know placed together and it works decently well to the point where I'm having fun with it and that's kind of the most important thing. And honestly, for as long as the frame rate itself is good, I am good. And these graphics actually reminded me of those old games I used to play before when I was younger. And actually, I mean that as a positive thing because it had that certain nostalgia effect. Now, on the animation side, there are problems, especially when you are moving around enemies and trying to pull off skills. Sometimes those animations can get into the way, but for most of the time they work decently well and fulfill their purpose of being responsive, especially when it comes to the gunfight segment. Overall the map itself is divided into different zones. Some zones have main missions, others have side activities that you can do if you want or skip depending on your playstyle. After you finish everything in the demo, which is about 3 hours, you can of course repeat the missions for as long as you want to boost the level of the character. Now besides the level itself you also have world tier which is a difficulty level. The bigger the tier the stronger the enemies but the loot is much better obviously. As you move levels your world tier rises but you can change it depending on the level you have but also put it in a way so that automatically the level goes up once you reach a certain level. Regarding the fighting itself it seems to me that this game really doesn't want you to hide behind a cover. It pushes you to fight enemies head to head because the more enemies you down the quicker your health you know region is but obviously I spent most of my time behind a cover because there is no way for me to fight them head on. And the overall AI of enemies is okay, nothing special. Some will stay behind cover and shoot from there while some enemies will try to circle around to get close to you so generally you will be moving your position a lot in the game but also I advise to stay in cover for like 80% of the time. Now I mentioned loot, well loot and abilities are very important in the game because for example this one boss that started pretty much nailed me two times but then I unlocked twisted rounds for my trickster class and combined with a good weapon he is going to be melting. So you will be looking for items most of the time to really push the damage numbers. And also you have mods you can put into your weapon to make it stronger. Also the map itself is 
It looks good, like there is a lot of variety on the map which makes it interesting and also the scope of the map and especially what is going around with, you know, tanks shooting and people fighting, it really pushes that immersion and it doesn't make the world dead, which in my opinion is very important, there is always something going on and if the world was dead I would definitely have a different maybe um, overall impressions of the game. So on that side also the game does a decent job. You can play the game solo or with friends and people, you know, that you find. You do need to be connected all the time to play, but the game itself is not like a huge hub with different people running around. If you're playing alone, you are playing absolutely alone. And it does seem Outriders just doesn't want to be a looter shooter, but also have a story which is going to dive deeper into the characters, the world and the overall story. I mean, story-wise, the game is okay. You know, regarding motion capture and dialogue cutscenes, there is definitely some work to be done, especially with, you know, Jason Bourne camera movement that I generally like, but if you pair it with low frame rate, which for some reason happens in cutscenes a lot, not in the when I'm playing, but in cutscenes the frame rate can go really low, and it can be a bit difficult to look, you know, at the shake due to low frame rate, so, you know, it's not that enjoyable. And so far, plot-wise, it's all pretty much decent. There is some good dialogue out there, especially because it's not all too serious all the time, so there is, you know, a certain flair in dialogue, although voice acting delivery in some cases maybe wasn't the best. But again, not every studio can afford high-end voice actors, but the ones that were here actually did a nice job overall. I just wish that some delivery was more meaningful and not just said for the sake of saying it. And also animations when you are entering, exiting something, I know it's for the sake of the loading, but I'm really not a fan of a two second cutscene where my character is going to exit the door and then I exit the door and my character exits the door and then the loading screen comes and then you are outside somewhere or in a new zone. I just wish when I click on the door, that's it, I'm out. Quick load and that's it, without the cutscene, so I do hope there is a way to actually disable these. Now what about a full game? Well, the game formula they have here is similar to the one you have in, let's say, Division, where once you finish it, you can do it again and again and again and again on a bigger difficulty, which of course is that grind for a better loot. So if you like these sort of games, then Outriders might be for you, since the main game itself will pretty much stay the same, obviously it's going to be longer. They said somewhere around 30 to 40 hours, I think, of the story slash other objectives and then from there obviously you're gonna be doing that grind but we shall see what sort of expansions and updates they have for us in the future because i do believe that's going to be somewhat of a vital thing to keep the game alive they also have a good more month to work on the game to iron out all of the issues but overall like this is the game i doubt it will change too much you know until release i was running this on i7 7700 and 1070 installed on an ssd and overall i was getting decent frame rate. I was playing on 144Hz monitor and in ultra settings. I was able to play fine until later missions, you know, came and due to all of the particles and graphics and objects around me, I had to drop to high settings to maintain that frame rate. But even then it had hiccups, but most of the time the frame rate was okay. And so far, personally, I had zero crashes overall. I actually wanted to test this on a 3080, but I can't find a single card in the whole world, so that will have to wait. So in the end, I kinda dig the game, it's a nice title to pass the time with, because, you know, just getting to the action and moving back and forth was easy, so I wasn't getting stuck in some zones, you know, having to go back and get, the, get to the gunfights. Also, fighting bosses was fun, and I had to turn into a real sweat lord to finish some fights. Especially, it can be fun if you're playing with other people slash friends. The game is coming out for PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X, as well as PC. Also, uh, Stadia. And for the last gen owners, once you buy the game, you can play it on a new gen through smart delivery on both Xbox and PlayStation. So, that's not only backwards compatibility, but a full release is going to be free once it's out. And that's it for today. I'm looking forward to the full release and to see how this is going to look like. I'm also lucky to be in the Ambassador program, so stay tuned. I will be definitely talking about it once the game gets closer to the release. Thank you for watching. Tell me down below what you think about the game and also smash that like and subscribe button for more. 
and join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. I also do have a Patreon page, if you were looking for an extra way to support the channel, you can do it through the link below. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, and stay classy everyone, bye bye.